Let's use Euler's formula to write cosine and sine in terms of complex exponentials. First, I'm going to write down Euler's formula. So Euler's formula says that e to the i theta is the same as cosine of theta plus i sine theta. On the left-hand side, we have a complex exponential, e to the i theta. There's an imaginary unit up in the top over here, and it's multiplying theta. And theta is some angle. And this angle makes uh, geometric sense when we actually draw this uh, on the complex plane. So this actually represents the angle up from the positive horizontal axis. This is the real component of this complex exponential. So cosine of theta is the real component. And sine of theta, that is the imaginary component. And the imaginary component gets multiplied by the imaginary unit i. So when you draw this uh, on the complex plane, this is the horizontal component, and this is the vertical component. Because we draw the real component on the horizontal axis, and the vertical axis is used to represent the imaginary component. So these are two equivalent ways of representing a complex number. One very important thing about this complex number is that its magnitude is 1. So it has to sit on the unit circle in the complex plane. So if you take the magnitude of this side, it's, all, it's equal to 1, and the magnitude of this side is also equal to 1. Now what I want to do is take the complex conjugate of this uh, formula over here. So we're going to take the complex conjugate, and that's going to turn the left-hand side into e to the minus i theta. So we change this i to a minus i, and then on the right-hand side, cosine of theta doesn't get changed at all. So the real component is the same. But this imaginary component gets negated. We turn that i into a minus i. So we have minus i sine theta. So you can see what happens when you take the complex conjugate. Now we're going to use this exponential over here and its complex conjugate to write two expressions. One expression is going to be for cosine of theta, and the other expression is going to be for sine of theta. And these are going to be very, very useful expressions, because cosine and sine are sometimes very difficult to work with, especially when we're doing calculus, when we're differentiating and integrating. We don't want to have these complicated expressions with cosines and sines. It's much easier to work with exponentials when you differentiate and integrate, because exponentials have a very simple rule for differentiation. So let's go ahead and add this guy to this guy. So first of all, we're going to add these expressions to each other. So we'll add the left-hand side to the left-hand side and the right-hand side to the right-hand side. What is that going to give us? I'll write it over here. So if we add these guys to each other, on the left-hand side, we're going to get e to the i theta plus e to the minus i theta. So that's the left-hand side added to the left-hand side. And now if we add this to this, what's going to happen? Well, we're going to have this term over here cancel with this term, because this is the negative of this term. That's what happened when we took the complex conjugate, we introduced a minus sign. So adding these guys together, they're actually the additive uh, inverses of each other. So together, they're going to give the additive identity, which is 0. So these guys are going to cancel, and we're just going to be left with cosine of theta plus cosine of theta. That's two copies of cosine theta. And that's going to give us 2 cosine theta. So that's what happens when we add this guy to this guy. Now, let's subtract. Let's take this guy and subtract the one below. So we're going to take e to the i theta, and then we're going to subtract e to the minus i theta. We're going to subtract the complex conjugate from this complex exponential. So what's that going to give us? Well, in this one over here, we actually canceled the signs, and we lost this imaginary component. And we were just left with twice the real component. What's going to happen over here? Well, this minus sign is going to turn this to a plus, and it's going to turn this to a minus. So when we subtract this minus this, when we take this guy and then subtract minus, we're going to have minus minus. That's going to turn into a plus. So these, these guys are actually going to add to each other. This is going to get doubled. But this guy is going to disappear because we're going to have cosine of theta minus cosine of theta. So those guys will cancel. 
And these guys are going to get doubled. So that's going to give us double i sine theta. So we have 2i sine theta. And you can see what's happening over here. On the right hand side, we just have the trigonometric function. And on the left hand side, we just have the exponentials. So let's write this in a more convenient form. I'm going to write the top one first. So what we have is that the real component of this complex exponential, e to the i theta, which is sometimes written as x, is equal to cosine of theta. And we know that cosine of theta is actually equal to this divided by 2, if we divide both sides of this equation by 2. So that's going to give us e to the i theta plus e to the minus i theta. And all of this has to be divided by 2. So here is a very useful relationship. Cosine of theta, which is the same as the real component of e to the i theta, that is equal to e to the i theta plus its complex conjugate all divided by 2. Now let's do the same thing for sine of theta. So the imaginary component, or write it as im for imaginary component of e to the i theta is sometimes called y. x and y are used when we write this in Cartesian form. And this is equivalent to sine of theta. And what can we write for sine of theta? Well, all we have to do is divide by 2i. So over here we divide it by 2, and over here we have to divide by 2i, because there's another factor of i. That i came from over here, because these guys were the imaginary components. So let's write that over here. Here we have e to the i theta minus e to the minus i theta all divided by 2i. So these two relationships are very, very useful. We're going to keep using these guys again and again. So anytime you have very complicated expressions with cosines and sines sometimes being multiplied or raised to powers, it's actually very uh, easy to switch this into this form. And then this is much easier to work with because these guys multiply with each other uh, very uh, elegantly. Right? Because if you multiply two exponentials together, you can actually use exponential laws. And if you take exponential functions and raise them to powers, you can again use exponential laws. And exponential laws are far more convenient to work with than trigonometric identities. Trigonometric identities can get very messy. And you have to do a lot of memorizing, or you have to look up tables from trigonometric identities. So this is what we actually managed to derive in this video. We started off with Euler's formula. We took the complex conjugate of Euler's formula. That gave us this expression over here. Then we added Euler's formula to its complex conjugate formula. And when we added left-hand side to left-hand side, that gave us this. And on the right-hand side, we actually canceled out the imaginary components, leaving double the real component. And we were left with 2i times the imaginary component when we subtracted the complex conjugate from e to the i theta. So this was then used to get this. We just divided both sides by 2 over here and both sides by 2i over here. So these are the real and imaginary components of e to the i theta. So this is specifically for complex numbers that have a magnitude of 1. If the complex number does not have a magnitude of 1, what you have to do is you have to introduce the radial distance away from the origin if you're working in polar form. So that is the magnitude of that complex number. And you just have to multiply these expressions by that magnitude, and that's going to move it up to a circle of a radius where the radius is actually the same as that magnitude. But what we're doing over here for all of these expressions is we're just working uh, with numbers that sit on the unit circle. So we'll draw a little diagram of what this looks like. If this is the complex plane, the unit circle looks like this. It's got a radius of 1. This, I'll draw the axes properly. This over here is the real component of the complex number. And this is the imaginary component of the complex number. All of these expressions, all the complex numbers that are of the form e to the i theta, they sit somewhere on this circle. And this circle has a radius of 1. So 1 is over here. This is i. Over here we have minus 1. Minus 1 sits over here. And down here we have minus i. So these four numbers actually fit uh, this form very well. And if you have some general number that sits 
anywhere on this circle. It could sit here, it could sit here, anywhere on the circle. Uh, it actually has a magnitude of one. So if you draw a line from the origin to that point, that distance has to equal one. And this angle over here is theta. Theta is the angle we were discussing. So this angle has a geometric interpretation on the complex plane. That's what theta actually represents. And why did I use the notation of x and y? Well, if you want to put this into Cartesian form, then you would split this up into its real component and its imaginary component. So the real and imaginary components are the projections down onto the horizontal and vertical axes. And here are some very useful expressions where you can link that exponential form to these trigonometric functions. So what we've done in this video is we've linked trigonometric functions to complex exponential functions and their complex conjugates. So this is a very uh, useful way of representing trigonometric functions. And we're going to keep using this again and again in quantum mechanics and in other areas of physics as well. So if you like this video and you, you want to see more videos about complex numbers and their relationships to quantum mechanics, make sure to check out the quantum mechanics playlist. You can find that playlist if you click over here.